Hi, I'm Harry, a real estate photographer based in Sydney, Australia. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a HDR photo in Aurora HDR. All right, here we are in Lightroom, and uh, these are gonna be the three images we're gonna work with today. So we've got our first bracket, and this was a natural light shot that was exposed for the room. And then if we keep going, we've got a flash shot, and this was two stops below our previous shot. And I was actually standing camera to the camera left, and you can see some of the hot spot from the flash just here. So this, this particular photo has um, got us very close to almost, you know, getting the photo in one single exposure, but we weren't able to get the detail or the color in the sky. And if we zoom in just a little bit further, you can see here too on the ground, we are losing some of the detail. Not that I think this really matters, but you know, in a situation where you've got high contrast and you wanna bring back that detail, I'm just gonna show you in this tutorial how we can achieve that and still get pretty good results using HDR software. I'd also like to just quickly say that I really shoot most of my things using a flambium technique and I think it is better, but there are just times where maybe the room is too big or um, you just can't, um, you know, get it or with, with flash or your lights may not be like bright enough or powerful enough to overpower the outside light. So this was a situation that I felt HDR was going to be good and um, We'll keep going on that note. So then our third shot was a natural light shot again. And I'll just have a look. I'll bring this back up to its default value. And you can see that's a pretty good exposure for the sky. And we've still got detail in our highlights down here. But what I actually find in a lot of HDR software is either when you merge or blend images together, the highlights or the bright bits can still blow out and this becomes very problematic. So what I've been finding works really quite well is if you bring down your darkest exposure, uh, bring it down a little bit darker than you normally would have it. And in this case, I'm just gonna bring it down by one stop. And in any areas when you're trying to do window pulls or that type of thing, I find this is the key to um, being able to get those windows pull, window pulls or getting that detail in the high bright bits. Uh, because with a you know, HDR photo or even an interior photo, you're really dealing with high dynamic range. Um, there's something else I'd like to just sort of touch on before we actually blend the images. But in this flash shot, you'll notice that the flash is actually white light. Uh, our daylight is white light, white light. It would technically have maybe a blue color cast in this situation, but, and then we've got tungsten uh, lights here. And I can't remember if I turn them down to 50% or dim them. I might have, I can't remember, but ultimately, what I did was I wanted my flash to be brighter than those lights. So now I'm uh, going to be able to get like accurate colors when we create this HDR image. And that's really where a lot of uh, natural light HDR images seem to not go so well. So that's just something to note that with the hybrid method, you're really going to be able to still get those accurate colors. Uh, so... All right, um, I'll just go over some of the, the camera, uh, sorry, the settings in Lightroom too. I've actually got like a preset on this. So I've got my sharpening and lens correction already done. We won't go into that, but I think it's also important maybe not to add any saturation or contrast right now because I just find uh, HDR software can do, you know, uh, can play around with your colors and make them more saturated and all that type of thing. I'd prefer to do that at the end. So, um, but I would like to at least fix the white balance in all the images before we blend them. And f uh, from playing around with this, I know that this is the white balance I'm pretty happy with off the bat. This um, one, we can actually go to say a mid gray somewhere just here. It didn't really do that much, but that would be a great way to correct it. 
And with this one, oh, sorry, this is our, sorry, that's, sorry, I'm getting confused here. But that was our natural light shot that I just corrected. I'm just gonna leave that as is. And this one we can give it a bit of a quick color correction. And then on our last one, I actually like setting this one to daylight as you can already see. Let's just go as shot and you can see it's a bit more yellow. But because it's blue sky and I really wanna show off that blue sky in the final image, I'm gonna go daylight. And I think I like that result better. I think for your window exposures, daylight's gonna be a pretty good start point. Okay, so I'm going to select all the uh, brackets and then we're going to right click and we're going to go edit in Aurora HDR. Just while the software is loading, um, I'd just like to say too that I've been very impressed with Aurora HDR. Um, I find the results to be quite well. I've used a lot of other softwares including Photomatix and Infuse and I think they're both great programs. Um, Infuse, I love the results, but the fact that you get ghosting problems from time to time um, with moving trees, it means you need to like potentially mask things in Photoshop after, and this then now creates an extra step. So I'm gonna show you how you can actually mask things in Aurora HDR, so you don't need to bring it back into Photoshop after. And uh, in Photomatix, you can actually do pretty much the same thing as this program, but I found the tools in there to be very slow and laggy and I just really couldn't deal with that. So uh, that wasn't really an option for me. Um, because this was on a tripod, I am not gonna use auto align and I'm just gonna click, uh, click create. Okay. So let's just uh, quickly use our eye tool up here to see our before and after. So that was our before, and that looks like it's showing us the flash shot. And that's our after, so you can see what's actually done, what it's actually done. And that's um, brought up the shadows just a little bit in the interior, and we've brought back our sky a little bit. And one of the things that I like about how I've shot this and this method of like, um, putting in these particular brightnesses or brackets into the software. As you can see on our histogram over here, the photo is already actually exposed nearly in the correct position. And this is great because let's, in some of the other softwares I've seen or like other techniques that I've done where it hasn't come out so well, you know, the exposure might be way down here somewhere. And to fix that, you've got to bring up the exposure right up and then you lose your window detail. And that's obviously not really desirable. In this case, I feel like the room, you know, it's quite well, but I want to try and bring back some of that detail in the sky. So I'm just going to bring it down just a touch, just a little bit. And um, also up here on the left, we can see the hot spot from the flash and that doesn't look good. So, uh, and I'll just touch on that too. That, that was me in the left hand side. I actually stood in the middle of the room and I used two speed lights on full power. So definitely was um, a bit of a challenge. I needed more power in the situation and that's why I chose to do a HDR image initially. And um, I couldn't really get my ISO up much higher because then I was gonna be losing all the detail and whatnot. Um, so a bit of a juggling act and I find this technique works quite well for me. So what I'm gonna do now is come up to this layer panel and I'm just gonna, whoops, sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing. Click on the plus symbol, and we're gonna click on add new layer image. And you can see here, I've actually got three my three brackets, and you've got the raw files, and then uh, Aurora HDR created TIFF files before it brought it in here. So I would, I'm gonna pick the natural light image that was exposed for the room, and I'm gonna pick the TIFF file because I think that's gonna work better and maybe less, you know, you're not gonna get a raw file with um, potentially no, um, you know, lens profile and those type of things. So we'll, we'll select the TIFF. Okay, and so that's brought it on. I sorry, brought it in. And now what we need to do is I'm gonna to come to the mask button. We're gonna click brush. And then I'm gonna to go to the mask and I'm gonna click invert. And so now that has turned that layer off 
and I'm going to turn my opacity up to 100%. And now I'm just going to start painting in that area where the flash was. And we might even just do the whole ceiling so we can start to bring in that natural light of the original layer. And that was just so easy for any problem areas or that type of thing. And this would work the same for... Um, uh, this would work the same for like if you had flash reflections, flash reflections in the window or something like that. You could just bring in another layer and use that um, the layer that had you know was exposed for the windows to remove the flash reflections, and that's something very commonly done. In this case, I feel like the ceiling is actually a little bit too bright, so I'm just going to bring the opacity back down to about 50%, and. I might just need to actually um, erase it now on 50% just to bring it back just a touch. So now we're only using 50% of that initial layer. And that looks a lot better to me. I think that looks pretty good. Um, just while we're in Aurora, I just want to show you maybe another feature that I've uh, liked personally. It was the adjustable gradient. So the way this works is you've got a slider for exposure, uh, vibrance and whatnot, and you can affect the top or the bottom part of the image depending on what you want to achieve. So let's say maybe the ceiling was a bit dark. I don't think it is in this case, but let's just say it was. I can start bringing it up and I could bring it down. And uh, I think that's pretty cool. And then also if you had a bit of a color cast on the ceiling, you could bring down the vibrance a bit and that might get rid of any color cast or orange tones or whatever you've got going on up there. In this case, I'm just gonna leave it at the default. But what I will do is I'll bring the exposure right up just to something really high. And then you can see this blend mode. And this is basically showing you uh, sorry, the example is not really showing it too well. So I'm just going to bring that back to default. And same with this one. I actually think I'm on the wrong layer. So let's just try this again. So bring it right up and then we use the blend mode. If we bring it right down, you can see um, that basically it's got a hard edge. So bringing the blending up is going to feather the top and bottom. So if we go to the bottom and bring it down, you can see now that how it affects the top and bottom. So I just like this. I think it's cool. It's very similar to Lightroom's um, gradients that you can use, but this is another option and I think it's quite clever. So we will bring that back to default if I can. I'm going to turn this other layer back on. Okay, great. And there we go. Uh, we've got our image now finally created in Aurora HDR. And what I'm going to do next is just hit apply. And this will export it back to Lightroom and we'll just do a little bit more work. Okay, so here's our final image. So what we can do is I noticed that it still looks just a little bit dark in some of these areas. So we can maybe bring up our shadows just a touch, just a little bit. Um, we can give it a bit of saturation, something like that. I can even, you know, we're still uh, very almost borderline overexposed. So we should bring our highlights just a little bit. I'm going to go to the luminance, bring our blues down just a touch. And this will make our blue more, sat uh, our sky more saturated, bring them up a little bit. And there we go. I would say that is our HDR photo done. And I think that looks pretty good for a HDR photo. And uh, we let the software do the hard work for us. We didn't have to, you know, replace skies. Admittedly, this would have been an image that was quite easily just to replace a sky or do something like that. Um, you know, we could have got away with still just maybe doing a flambient shot. And I like how in this particular example, we still maintain detail in those highlights and our room still looks pretty good and our colors are accurate. I hope you enjoyed my techniques on how to blend the HDR photo. Be sure to like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. And remember, sold is the word you'll be hearing once I photograph your property. Thank you.